Smart fans, I have been playing with Collector by Esri. So it's an ArcGIS app which allows you to collect data in the field. I was hoping I could use Survey123, but unfortunately you can't record lines or polygons or those kind of features using Survey123. Now I came across a number of difficulties while I was doing this. I just thought I'd share how to get around them, so maybe save you some time. I have a map open here. It's a new map. Um, I have a base map added. It is the world imagery. I've changed the name. I've taken out the spaces and I've called it offline because this is going to be my offline TPK, which is tile package. So I'm going to save what I've got here in pro. And down at the bottom, you'll see the scale. Now I've had a look and I know that the scale is going to be all right at around one to 4,000. So that's the only resolution I need. And up on the map tab, you can go to download map. And I'm going to include the base map and the tile layers. And I'm going to change the max scale to the scale that I mentioned previously, around 1, uh, 4,500. And then I'll hit download. And that will start exporting a tile cache. Now this does take a very long time. So sit tight, depending on your internet connection, it could take a very, very long time. Once your tile package has been created, it's going to be added to your map. So you can see here, I've got mine. Now the name's a little bit different because I did do this previously and I'm not going to wait for another one to download. And you can see that it's got that extension of .tpk. So that means that it's a tile package and we can host that on our ArcGIS online account and other people will be able to access it. So in order to do that, you need to right click the tile package that's just been created, go down to sharing and share as a web layer. This will bring up a little context box and summary. I'll just do demo for this and demo again. For the layer type, I'm going to choose tile. And then further down, we'll have a look at sharing. We'll have a look at that a little bit later on, but I'm just going to save it in my root folder. I'm going to analyze that. And then I'm going to hit publish. Now I won't actually do this because I've already sent it to ArcGIS Online, but next we'll go and have a look at what it looks like in ArcGIS Online. Here we are in my organizational account and you can see here we've got this TPK. So that is a hosted tile layer. Now I'm going to go into this and just have a look at its definitions and settings. So in the settings, you will notice that we have a visible range. I'm just going to increase that a little bit. Then I'm going to save what I've done. And once I hit the save button, you should see it update. And then I'm going to build a tile package. Now you can see that I've already got some tiles built down here. That's from a previous upload. I'm just going to check the ones that are missing so that we can see it when we zoomed really far out. And it should only be one tile each for these zoom levels. And I'm going to create those tiles. It will tell me how many tiles I'm creating, how much it's going to cost. I think we're going to be okay. Let's create those tiles. Again, be warned, this can take a while. And the first time you have a look at the settings for your tile layer, it will build tiles automatically and it can take a long time. So you might want to go and do something else, but all of my tiles are built now and that's ready for use. The other thing I'm going to do is check this offline mode. So by checking this, it allows other people to download that base map. So that's quite useful, given that we want to use Collector offline. Now I'm back at my main content page, and I do already have a feature layer that's hosted that's called Phase 1. And this is the feature layer that people using Collector are going to be able to update. So they'll be able to add features to it, delete features from it, all of that. Now I'm going to create a new map and I'm going to start using these layers that I have in order to build this map. So I'm going to go first of all to add and I'll search for my layers. 
and I'm going to select this world imagery one first. Now down at the bottom I have an option to use it as a base map and I do want to use that as a base map. So I'm going to OK that and you can see my base map pops in to the map. So now we're not using any online base maps, this is one that's available offline. Next thing I'm going to do is add my phase one feature layer and I'll add that to the map as well. And you can see that we've got a couple of points on here already that have been added. So that's quite nice. Uh, let's go back from this and I'm just going to have a quick look at the content. So here's our phase one layer. I've got phase one habitat points, lines and polygons. And if I just go into the attribute table here, I've added a couple of things to this, so we can have a team number and we can also put in some notes. Object ID is just there by default, but I just added these before I uploaded it to ArcGIS Online so that different teams can note who they are and they can put some notes in. If you want to know more about that, let me know in the comments and I'll be able to set you up with a phase one layer of your own. So now my map's all set, I'm going to save it. I'll save it as YouTube demo. Tags will just be demo again and the description is demo. So let's save that map. And that should now be added to my content. So if I go back to my content, I can see the YouTube demo web map is there and currently it is private. Now I wanted to show you something about the feature layer. So this is our phase one points, lines and polygons. And if I go into that, just like our base map, we needed to make that available offline. If I go into the feature layer and then go to settings for this as well. Here we've got enable sync. So disconnected editing with synchronization is available. So you wanna check that and make sure that that's set. And then down at the bottom, export data, allow others to export to different formats. Check that as well. Don't forget to save this. And what we're doing here is making both our base map and our feature layer, our hosted feature layer, available offline. So that's going to become important when we open up Collector. So I have the map, I also have the feature layer, and I also have my base map. Now, if I want to invite somebody who's not in my organization to come along and help me out with some data collection, I can do that by going to groups. And I'm gonna to go to create a new group and we'll be able to give it a group name, etc. So I've filled in everything that I need to, the group name, the summary and the tags. And who's gonna be able to view this group? So I'm gonna set that to only group members only group members are going to be able to contribute to the group and the items in the group, what can its members update, I'm going to set only their own items. All items would mean that only people in my organization could alter the data, but I want somebody outside of my organization to be able to do that. So only their items. I'm going to leave it at that and create my group. With the group created, now I can go into members and currently I'm the only member, so this is my Bird GIS account. What I'm going to do is invite users, so I'll click there. I don't only want to search for members in Bird GIS, I want to search all of Esri. So I'm going to type in test collect, which is my dummy account, and search for that. And below you can see that now test collect, also me, is available. So I'll send an invitation to them and off it goes. If I go into my test collect account, so this would be somebody outside of your organization, back to groups, and here's my invitation. Click on that, I've been invited to join this group, so I'll do that. And there's my group. If I switch back to my Bird GIS account and refresh the page, you can now see that I've got Test Collect and I've got Bird GIS as well. Next step is to go back to Content. And I'm going to select my YouTube demo map. I'm going to select my base map. 
the service definition for my base map, the feature layer, and the service definition for the feature layer. And with these, I'm going to change my sharing options. So who would I like to share this with? Currently, it's only Bird GIS, but I'm going to add YouTube demo to that. OK, that and those settings are done. What this means is that anybody in that group can now view that map. So the next stage is to open up Collector in a mobile device. And I'll do that now. We have some maps available. Now what I'm going to do is refresh this. And we should be able to see that our YouTube demo map will pop up. Down at the bottom, there's YouTube demo. And you'll notice that it's got this little download tab next to it. The reason that we've got that is because we set our base map to be downloadable and we set our feature layer to be downloadable as well. So let's have a look at what the map looks like. I'm just going to skip this because I'm inside. And there it is. As per usual, we can zoom in and move around. Now this is pretty cool, but currently I'm in the Bird GIS collector. So what I'm going to do is go out and I'm going to switch accounts. So I'll go into test collect. And there you can see YouTube demo is available for them as well. Now I'm back in ArcGIS Pro and what I'm going to do is add that feature layer that we had on ArcGIS online. I'm going to add it into this map. So we are zoomed in to our area of interest and if I just go up to portal and then I'm going to search for phase one. There's our phase one feature layer. I'm going to drag that across and into our map. So this has been added and we can see that there's a couple of target notes in there already. And what I'm going to do next is use collector and see this update in ArcGIS Pro. So with Collector open, I'm just going to add a new point and it's going to be a target note. I'll skip this again because I'm inside. And for my team number, I'm going to add 777. Very lucky. And for notes, I'm going to write this is a target note. That all looks good. I don't have my GPS switched on, so I am going to use the map and I'm just going to plop a random point on there. That looks good, so I'll give it a check mark. And that should be sending updates to our feature layer. Now, if you're not seeing updates for any reason, you can go into your layer, just go down to properties and then make sure that it's refreshing every so often. So I'll set this to one second. And there's our updates. So if I go over to my habitat point and open the attribute table, you can see my target note has been added. So this is really cool. You could have people out in the field collecting data while you're sitting at your desk and watching the data feed in in real time direct in ArcGIS Pro. So pretty neat, really. We'll be testing this tomorrow with some students and I will let you know how it goes if we have any data disasters, but I'm sure that we won't. Hope you've enjoyed this video and please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Happy mapping.